Hi there, I'm Lena Anani, and you're listening to She Wrote a Book, where I interview amazing women from all over the world who also happen to be published authors. I created this show to educate, entertain, and inspire you to be the voice you want to hear in the world. Now let's get started. You are listening to episode number 82 of She Wrote a Book, and today I'm interviewing Shawnee Lavender, author of the book, I Do, I Do, The Marriage Vow Workbook. Using the Marriage Vow Workbook, you can create inspiring marriage vows that will express your deepest feelings for one another, increase your trust and connection, and provide a strong foundation for your relationship now and in years to come. Shawnee Lavender coaches conscious moms to create connected, respectful, and thriving families. Coaching since 2001, she holds a master's degree, is a certified simplicity parenting coach, and is accredited by the International Coach Federation. Again, her book is called I Do, I Do, The Marriage Vow Workbook. You can find the link to purchase her book in our show notes for this episode at shewroteabook.com slash 82. So, Shawnee, it's such a pleasure to have you as a guest today. I'm, I'm really excited to ask you more, or learn more about your book today. But my first question for you is this. Why did you decide to write and publish this specific book? Mm. Thanks, Lena, for having me. And with a lot of different reasons. My husband and I, who actually wrote the book with me, so it could be she and he wrote a book, um, we have used vows in our relationship since we first became a couple. And we saw the really tremendous positive impact that creating vows had on our relationship. And so we said, there's there's something here that we want to share with other people. So that was one of the main things. The other reason was you know, as we would go to weddings and we'd listen to other people make their commitments to one another, you know, there really was that sense of, well, wait a minute, people are wanting to do this. Some people are, but they just don't know how to do it. And so we wanted to provide that resource for them to be able to do that. That's great. So, so what are some of, uh, some of the vows that you've witnessed in the past where you're like, oh my gosh, no, we could totally do this better. What, what are some of those vows? <laughs> well, and it's not doing it better. I'm glad you asked that. It's really each couple, in our view, the best way to do it is to write vows that fit for them. What's What matters to them? What are their values as a couple? What are they wanting to create in their relationship and their family? So a person can have vows that we might listen to and say, ah, what? that doesn't matter. It's, does it resonate with them? Does it speak to what they're about? Is it something that they can use to reconnect when, as will happen in any relationship, even the best ones, you're going to get off track. You know, you're going to have those times of losing your way as a couple. And so we encourage people to use those vows to get back on track and say, oh yeah, what is it we're about? Let's get out our vows. And we do that with our vows on on a monthly basis and we've been married for almost 17 years oh my gosh i was i was just going to ask you like why do you think vows are so important and then to hear that you revisit them every month i mean that that's like i feel like that was the answer that I would have, <laughs> yeah that would have made me feel better about it but <laughs> why else why else do you feel like vows are so important especially to write one's the way you suggest yeah. your reader to write them? Well, there's a couple of reasons. One, which I already alluded to, certainly. Um, the process of sitting down and creating them, and I want to say this right now, because some people will say, well, I, I'm not a good writer. I can't write vows. It's not true. Even if writing is not your strength, these are about writing words that speak, again, your truth, that come from your heart, that talk about what you want and who you are as a couple, so on and so forth. So going through that process in and of itself, you know, we think of it as like marriage counseling. Most people don't do that anymore unless it's maybe required by their religious faith. And so we think it's essential to a healthy relationship to have some of those deep conversations ahead of time. So even if somebody didn't use this book to write their actual vows, um, 
I think the exercises that we take people through would be wonderfully illuminating for them and their relationship and get them to to those deeper discussions. So they are asking those important questions up front and not five years down the road, you know, and saying, oh, you know what, we really are going for totally different things in life. And maybe this relationship isn't meant to support both of us in our life path. Wow. Yeah. Good points. Um, what do you, uh, what has been of, of all the exercises that you suggest in your book, um, what has been your reader's favorite one? Hmm. That's a great question. I don't know if there's a universal favorite, um, different people. A lot of people have done values exercises, whether, you know, maybe on their job, you know, they might not have done it personally. Um, so people, we have some values exercises in there. We have something in there that it's called the commitment scale. So that's less, I mean, it is an exercise, but it's really about helping you see what level of commitment you're at right now in your relationship and giving you ideas about how you can deepen it no matter where you're at. But I think one of my favorites is we give ideas and tips for empathic listening, um, which is really about the ability to fully hear your partner so that you're not just listening partially to, you know, hear something that you want to refute or (laughs) hear the thing that you've been waiting for them to say, you know, you're really listening beyond the words uh, into everything, into the feelings. And from my experience in relationships and in my professional work is really listening is a very, underutilized skill and something that a lot of people actually could use training in. So that's one of my favorite exercises is, is that to help people practice that and bring that into more fullness in their relationship. I'm sorry. I, I didn't catch that. No, just kidding. I totally heard everything. It's such a horrible, a horrible joke. I'm sorry. I had to throw that in there. Oh, it's great. I love it. I love it. <laughs> right. But uh, yeah, no, I love, I love, I'm looking at your table of contents and I see that it's the first exercise in your book. And I love that, that you start off with listening. And what I love most about that is, you know, when you think of writing your vows, it's, it's more of expressing, get it, you know, saying it, speaking it. And, and you forget that, or I personally didn't even consider the importance of listening when it comes to creating vows because it's, it's more, you think it's more of a projection than it is, you know, a give and take a receiving. So I love that. I I love that. Well, and just to add one other thing, some people too, it's sort of interesting. We have couples who will write one set of vows. So they share them. They are, you know, the same for each person. And we have uh, many, many vows in the back of the book, um, as well as on our website. But um, other people do separate vows. And that's the way my husband, Bruce, and I, we have separate vows. They're similar. I mean, you definitely would be able to pick out and say, oh, obviously, these two people are going for the same thing. But I wrote mine. I wrote the words that are true to me. And he wrote the words that are true to him. So I like that aspect, too, of like you're talking about with listening you know, I can listen into his and go, oh, yeah, that's that's something that he's telling me in that vow that he wants me to know. Or that's an expression of what is really matters to him or the way he perceives things. So, yeah, it, it the listening part of it can be a, a really rich experience in and of itself. I'm curious, what made you guys decide to do separate vows versus reading the same ones? I have no idea. <laughs> I think that, uh, you know, we, we, when we first wrote our relationship vows, when we, when we moved in together, um, we did the same thing. So we had separate, separate vows. Um, mine are always longer than his cause I'm more verbose. <laughs> um, so, uh, we continued that same trend when we got married and then we actually translated this process into writing vows or commitments as we call them um, with our daughter when we when she came into her life so she was a month old and we wrote vows and so I drafted in that case I drafted you know here's what I'm committing to as as her mom and her parent and Bruce looked at those and he's like yeah I'm on board with that and he wanted to have some of his own language and you know also said can we change this or this doesn't quite make sense to me. So for that, 
we have one set, one universal set of commitments. So I think it can work either way, but um, it just happens to be the way that we did it for for our intimate relationship, both when we were dating and as a married couple. I'm so moved by the thought of writing vows for your child. Mm. That is so beautiful. Mm. Do you do you ever go back and revisit and revise those vows? Yeah, it's funny you should mention that. Um, so she, our daughter's five and a half, and so we wrote them again, essentially a month after she was born. So five and a half years ago, <clears throat> and we just like we do with our marriage vows, we reread hers probably not as often. I would say maybe once a quarter, um, and they're posted in her room. We have them framed in her room. Um, and we will sometimes check in with her, you know, we'll be at dinner and say, let's, we're going to read a couple of these, you know, how are, how do you think we're doing? (laughs) Ask for her. It's like our performance review, you know, like, how are we doing on this? Um, you know, and I say that lightly, but it really is, it's a way for us to check in. And, um, for us, it really is this piece of, connecting with our bigger purpose because as a parent you get so it it can be so easy to get so lost in the day-to-day responsibilities that it's really easy to lose sight of what's what's the bigger picture what's my larger purpose here and so getting back to your question do you revise them we are going to revise our sum only because even though we think they really still work there's thing there are things that we've learned that we want to that we think are so important that they're worth putting into words you know it's like ah there's a piece here that we want to really mention and and make sure it's there for us to to keep us mindful and so yeah i think that you do re review them and be open to changing them if that seems like that's going to support you as as a parent and as a family Beautiful. I love that. Shani, uh, quick question. What do you love most about being an author? Hmm, the fame and notoriety. I'm sure nobody has ever said that before. No. <laughs> um, I really love to be able to gift books to people. Um, you know, obviously a lot of people get married, so it's, it's our go-to wedding gift. Um, but also just that idea that whatever you've written, what, you know, whatever your book is, it's really something that you can give to another person that is really a gift from yourself. It's not just this mass produced thing that you bought, which is fine, but it's really this personal gift of, Hey, I wanted to share this with you. And, you know, we're fortunate to have many books that we've written in our family. And so we have a lot of choices there, but I think it's a great way to to bless other people in your life and and leave a little part of yourself out in the world. I love it. Well, Shani, thank you so much for being our special guest today. We will have a link to your book in the show notes for this episode, and our listeners can find that at shewroteabook.com slash 82 to learn more about our author and our awesome book. So thanks again, Shani. It's been wonderful. Thanks, Lena. I really enjoyed the conversation. Thank you for listening to She Wrote a Book. If you enjoyed this episode, then subscribe now so you can automatically get access to all new episodes and feel free to share your inspired thoughts with us in the comments too. I'd love to hear from you. Until then, may you always feel good and make magic.